fairies. Are they real? Many would say no, but to those who have encountered these creatures, their experiences are truly terrifying. Here is some of the most compelling images of supposed fairies that I could find, and later I'll be discussing the history of fairy photography and why so many of these images are so controversial. Number one fairy in Wales. This photo was taken in Wales in 2016 by a rapper with the name Eggsy from the band Goldie Looking Chain, also known as John Rutledge. He took this image while he was out on a stroll in the countryside. At first glance, this looks like a normal image of the outdoors. But if you zoom into the photo, you will discover something that is truly terrifying. In the images, you can see arms and legs and wings of some unknown creature. Even though the most logical explanation for this is bugs, it's very strange that they all look this way. For example, if they were all large mosquitoes, their legs would be pointed in all different directions. But these images look interesting because they're position of their arms and legs is very human-like. For these reasons, I feel that this is a very interesting image because it doesn't look like a typical bug. Professor photographs fairies. Now, this is a very interesting image if you consider the source it's coming from. This photo was taken by John Hatt, who works as a director for the Manchester Institute for Research and Innovation in Art and Design at the Manchester Metropolitan University. He took these photos in the British countryside in Rosendale, Valley, Lanshire. Many who've seen the photos claim that this is either flies or gnats, but if you compare this image with photos of those bugs, then you will realize that they don't look quite the same. He claims that these photos are unedited and now are in a exhibit called the Rosendale Fairies at the Whittaker Museum in Rosendale. Number three, fairy caught on camera. This image is very interesting because it was taken completely by accident in 2007. Phyllis Bacon took this photo of her backyard in New Addington in England when she was chatting with some relatives. She claims that she spent several months comparing the photo to other photos of other insects, but she was unable to find something that looked similar. For similar reasons as the first photo on this list, it could be possible it is a bug, but the position of the arms and legs looks similar to humans. And I like the first image because all the creatures look like this and don't have legs bending all over the place like a typical bug like mosquitoes. So on its own, it isn't a compelling piece of evidence, but if you compare it to the first image, it is extremely fascinating. Fairy in the backyard. I have a lot of thoughts about this video, but I'm just going to show it to you and then explain my thoughts. In the summer, it's fun because we put these mats down and the hose and it. We put, we put the hose down uh. under and go down and it. We go down on it in a swimming Thank costume. Goal it's for really boys. It's a bit wet now. Really yeah, it's yeah. really wet now. now. This is because it rained last night. This like is an apple tree. Oh uh, wow! Big apples, very big apples. Are they still on it? There's a they few. They all there's Some there, and some but there. There. most of them are on the floor. And I've oh got yeah. Holes in What's them that? Them. Yeah. Oh, look. What's what? Yeah. Yeah. Look. Why up there? Insect or something. Is that an insect? Let's have a look. The very first thing I noticed about this clip is that it is an extremely high quality footage, especially for 2008. It's even a much higher quality than some videos on YouTube. Now on YouTube, it doesn't have that high of a quality, but if you look past that and if it was full HD quality, then you would see what I'm talking about. I feel like they tried to hide this fact by not uploading it to a high resolution, but even with the high resolution, you can still tell that it's not your typical video recording camera, especially for 2008. That being said, however, the kids are either really good actors or their response is genuine. Completely relaxed going around their backyard and fooling around. I do feel like their reaction, especially when the boy says, what's that? And then one of the girls replies, what's what? 
reaction sounds very genuine, but at the same time, why do you have such a high quality camera for a silly video like this? It does not help that the video is titled Creepy Fairy Insect UK, and with the super detailed description of the word fairies. That's it. That's all that's in the description. The sound of the wings also sounds really off to me, as if it was edited in later because it sounds too crisp next to the other sounds and is very loud compared to the other sounds in the video as well. Oh my god! Ugh. But I included this video on this list because it is a very interesting story, is very visually interesting, and leads me to my next point. The history of fairy photography. Photos of fairies is nothing new. In fact, people have claimed to take photos of fairies since the early days of cameras. But here is the story of some of the very first fairy images. The story takes place in Cottonley, a village outside of Bradford in Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. When 16-year-old Elsie Wright took this photo of her 10-year-old cousin Frances Griffiths in the summer of 1917. These girls claim that these photos were real for decades, causing a huge frenzy around the world, fooling even celebrities like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of the Sherlock Holmes series. Doyle was so enthusiastic he wrote an article titled, Fairies Photographed, a new epoch-making event. Doyle passionately and foolishly argued that the images were credible and their capture was a moment of divine heraldry. He was met with a large amount of criticism. However, this story takes place during World War I, so people are going through extreme emotional turmoil because so many people they had known had passed away in the war. This story took their minds off the horrors of war and gave them optimism and motivation to move forward. Cameras and photography were extremely new technology, and these images were released and used by spiritualists as evidence for their theories that cameras captured things that the human eye could not. Both Elsie Wright and Francis Griffiths claimed that these photos were real for 60 years until 1983, when Francis confessed that these photos were a hoax and wanted to confess because she was, quote, fed up with all the stories, she complained. I hated those photographs and cringed every time I see them. I thought it was a joke, but everyone kept going. It should have died a natural death 60 years ago. Quote, I do not want to die and leave my grandchildren with a loony grandmother to remember. Another quote was, this joke was only meant to last two hours, said Elsie towards the end of her life. It lasted 70 years. The one photo they did claim was real was of their fifth photo, the fairy Bower, and claimed it as authentic. How did these young girls fake these images when most photographers were not able to replicate their results? In the summer of 1917, Frances had fallen into a river and when she came home, her mother asked why she was all wet. Frances replied that she was playing with fairies. Her mother was not impressed by the story and sent her to the attic where Frances told Elsie about her fictional story. Elsie then decided to create a foolish prank where they were going to create fake fairy photos. The girls then drew fairies and pasted them on cardboard and used zinc oxide tape. They asked Elsie's father, Arthur Wright, to borrow his camera and he agreed and then they got to work creating these images. Polly Wright, Elsie's mother, and her sister, Annie Griffiths, Francis's mother, took these photographs to a meeting of the Theosophical Society in Harrogate, and the rest is history. Make sure to subscribe for more paranormal videos, and I'll see you all next time.